Yeah, they are Jee Baji crew. Hope you're having a great holiday season. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, due to the popularity of my ETS2 um, settings video, uh, I've decided I'd do a um, ATS settings, best settings that I've found that um, give the most realistic feedback for your steering wheel, best graphics and uh, sound, etc. Uh, so yeah, let's get straight into it. So first thing, let's go to the options. Okay, and before we get into it, uh, just stick around to the end because I'll have another useful tip for you uh, that you might enjoy. All right, so starting at the top here, full screen mode. Brightness I've set at 95% because I've found with my monitors and playback 95% brightness seems to suit me. But that will be an adjustment that you'll probably find that you might fiddle with yourself until you get um, it just right. Resolution I use to your monitors. So my resolution is 3840 by 1079. Depending on what you're using, you'll set that to whatever resolution suits your monitor setup. Uh, I've got 144 hertz because my slowest monitor is 144. So I've put it on that. And I've enabled a vertical synchronization. All right. And then we move on to the advanced graphical settings. Now, this is where, uh, as I explained in my last video, a lot of people get confused. They don't know what to um, set the scaling to. I have found that 300% is, for my system um, and for quite a few other systems, the most optical, op optimal blah, 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 setting to choose. Uh, anti alloy uh, uh, that one, SMAA, I'm getting tongue-tied. I've set that to Ultra. Now, in my ETS2 setup, I've got that disabled, I think. can't remember. I'm pretty sure I've got that disabled, but that's because I found in ETS2 it works well. But here in ATS, I've found that Ultra seems to work um, the best. Again, this is for my setup. may not work with yours, but it's a good place to start. And you can then uh, adjust as needed. Uh, I have SSAO, screen space ambient occlusion disabled. Depth of field I have disabled just like I do in ETS2. Sun shafts enabled because I like the optical, uh, yeah, the graphical effect. Um, color correction I have that disabled because the game does a good job of that. Uh, reflection scaling 100%. And again, this is another one that confuses a lot of people. I've found that 100%, which is basically in the middle, seems to give the best results. Everything else is high, except for shadow quality, which is ultra. And mirror quality, again, I've set that to low, just like I've done in ETS2, because that seems to take um, or affect the frames per second more than anything else. So by setting that to low, you'll find that you'll get better FPS. And therefore, mirror distance is also low. Uh, anastropic filtering is 16 times. Normal maps, graphic headlights, secondary headlights, I've turned that off. Also, that affects your frames per second. And I've found that by turning that off, that you get better um, performance. Light visibility ranges, high. And pedestrians, I've got ticked because I want them included in the game. So I'm trying to keep it as realistic as possible. All right, so that's the graphics. I'll go back to the top. If at any time you want to come back, you can come back, pause, and check it all out again. Some of the settings don't seem to work with you. Experiment and see how you go. All right, with the audio, again, this is the best audio setup I've found um, for my system and my sound. I normally use headphones all the time because I'm recording and whatnot, and it also, I <laughs> my setup is in the living room, so other people watch TV while I'm gaming and recording, so I've got to uh, make sure that they are not um, being interfered with as far as volume goes. So the truck turbo, that should be 50. So everything is 50 basically, 100%, and everything else is 50, except for radio volume. I have that turned down, but that's adjustable within game. So when I do have the radio, I just adjust within the game. Voice navigation, I have at 75% because I've found that that's um, actually, I'll crank that up to 80, 80% 80 because uh, 75 to 
So I found that that way you can hear it over the engine noises. For some of the um, mod engines that I use are quite noisy. So at 80%, then I can hear the voice navigation. CB radio, again, ran about 50%. Music volume, I have that turned off because I'm on YouTube half the time and I don't want to get cop uh, hit with a copyright infringement. UI sounds volume, 50%. Um, UI music again that's off and intro logos volume about 12% again these are the best um, volumes that I've found for my setup and it um, works for me might not for you experiment see what you think it's a good place to start all right then we go into enable voice navigation I have the CB radio cop scouting sound fix on here this is from Sound fixes, you can download that. Oh, it's uh, you can subscribe to it on Steam, and within the sound fixes, you have um, now a CB radio cop scouting. And what that means is that if there's any cops in the area, if there are any AI trucks around that have spotted it, they will give you a warning so you slow down and don't get hit with a fine. Let's see if we can get the preview to work. I couldn't get it to do it last time. Oh, oh, hang on, maybe. Nope. Okay. Speed warning. I don't have any speed warnings on because I uh, just watch my speed. Uh, voiceover noise for CB radio. These are just the default uh, settings because I don't really use the CB radio because I'm not on Trucker's MP or whatever it's called, the multiplayer. Uh, I turn off the backup beeper because to me it's annoying. Uh, rumble stripes, I have that on. Open window noise, have that on. Noise of the flowing air is naturally grayed out because you get that when you open the window. Reverb effect for the cabin's on. Reverb effect for the environment is on. Play sound when the game is in background. No, untick. Then here you will choose your default sound. You can either go through this default or if you've got something else that you want to use, you can choose it here. I have a, a Mayono um, sound deck that I use to uh, filter with my sound through. So but you'll choose whatever you have in that area. And again, like I say, these sound levels I've found produce the best sound quality that I can find uh, because I'm trying to go for realism. Okay, in gameplay, what do we do here? Okay, random desktop background, not worried, so that's unticked. Same with the 60 second, this is the default. Fatigue simulation, that can be on or off, it's up to you. Um, I leave that off because I'm not really concerned about that. I know I said I wanted to go for realism. I have an, uh, a profile where that is ticked, and it's called keeping it real, and that way it's more realistic. So any, you know, if I'm after ultra realism, I'll click that. But for the purposes of when I'm recording videos and stuff like that. I want that off because I don't want to get uh, the flow of the video interrupted by me having to stop to rest. But again, that's totally up to you. That's your choice. Traffic, traffic offences, I've ticked that. That just simply means that if you're going through a red light or speeding, you will get book. You'll get a fine. The cops will nab you. Um, preferred job length, again, same as what I've got in ETS2, 95%. Found that the best uh, for me. Road advice, speed limiter, show truck limit. You can show car limit, which is faster than the truck, or hide it all together. I want to know what speed limit I should be going at, so therefore I say let's do show truck limit. Uh, Road advisor speed warning, I have that on. That's just simply the um, on the route advisor, it turns red if you're speeding. Automatic parking dialogue, I have that undone. That is... Um, the when you go to uh, park or drop off your load, this uh, is where you get choose what one to, to go with. I've got that undone because I don't want that. I basically uh, want to take the hardest one I can take, um, and I leave the game up to choose that. Uh, keep route advisor hidden. I've left that at default. I don't know what that does. I've never unticked it, so I'm sorry. Can't tell you, but I just leave it ticked. Heavy cargo warning screen, I have that unticked uh, because when you're going for heavy cargo, you know you're going for heavy cargo. Um, so don't need the warning screen. 
Map alignment, north locked. Again, I found that the best one, but you can always choose which one you want. That's your choice. Go navigation always uh, because I'll get lost because I'm not from America and I don't know my way around. Navigation mode, going for best. You can go via small roads, go for shortest or best. I found best to be the best. Um, parking difficulty. This, yeah, this is where I've set it to random. You can uh, set it skilled or whatever. I choose random because, again, that's more like in real life because some will be difficult, some will be easy, some will be medium. Uh, okay, random road events. I've set that at 28%. The reason that's set at 28% is because any higher and you find that you'll have too many different things uh, getting in your way on the roads and therefore you'll uh, be late at your job. If you have it any lower, you won't have any road events and that's not realistic. I found at 28%, that's probably the most realistic for random road events that you're going to get. Detours, I've turned that to zero. Again, this isn't necessarily uh, realistic, but I found that for me, because I'm recording on this profile, uh, recording YouTube videos, that I don't want detours or whatever slowing me down, so I've turned that off. But again, that's your choice. You can adjust it and play with it until you find a, a suitable range that you're happy with. Rain probability set to 10% because uh, no one likes driving in the rain. And... 10% uh, I found that way, at least you get a little bit of rain here and there, and uh, it adds to the immersion. Okay, time zone, full info. You can have only time or disabled, but I chose full info because I want to know exactly what's going on. Uh, show cutscenes, yes, that's so that if uh, you pull up at a uh, point of uh, interest or whatever you want to call it with a little camera, you get to see the cutscenes and so forth. Show blockers. Now, a lot of people have this disabled and wonder why they run into um, invisible barriers. But what this is, is when you're driving along, if there is a road that you're not supposed to go down, there are a lot of X's across that road to show you you can't go down there. If you untick this, they disappear, and you might end up driving down that road and causing damage to your truck. So I have that enabled so that I can see those... Uh, as X's and I know do not enter. Um, inverse mounts, I'm not using the mouse that much except for in the menu, so I don't worry about that. If you're a mouse user, well, that's again up to you. These settings, by the way, are for, for me with my steering wheel, I use a G29 Logitech. And um, so if you use mouse and keyboard, these may not work for you. I can't guarantee either way. Okay, so down to truck settings. Transmission type is the H-shifter because I use a uh, Logitech uh, six-speed with the actual 18-speed um, gear knob that has high-low splitter and jake brake attached to it. So it gives me a realistic feeling or as close as possible to that that you can possibly get. So that's why I go for H-shifter. Snart, snart, snart. Smart sequential shifting. I had that on deck because I don't use a sequential shifter. Uh, steering auto center. I've always left that thick, but it's supposed to be only for keyboard and gamepad. So probably irrelevant for me, but if that's what you use, I suggest that you have it thick. Steering animation range. This is dependent on the steering wheel that you use. As I said, I use a Logitech G29. So therefore I have it set at 900 degrees because it's 450 either way, oh. left and right. So therefore um, you will set that to whatever your steering wheel range is, if it's 450 or 180 or whatever. Uh, sorry, 1,080. Sorry, 1,800. Uh, braking intensity, I have that set to 80% because, again, I'm going trying to go for realism. For my braking system, which is a Logitech, pedals at 80 percent it seems to be more realistic uh, and i've driven trucks before so therefore I, i've got a pretty good idea of what, how those trucks behave for me and that's how i've set it uh, truck stability 90 percent trailer stability 90 percent again i found that these are the best settings for my to me be more realistic drive shaft torque 20 percent 
don't want any more than that as far as I'm concerned. In fact, you could probably have that at zero if you're not bothered. I have it 20% just to give it a little bit of um, torque so that um, it's more realistic to me. Suspension stiffness 65%, cabin suspension six, stiffness 65%. Again, I found that this is the more realistic setting for me. Uneven surface simulation 100%. Uh, advanced trailer coupling. Now, this is uh, the hardest coupling you can get. And again, that's because I'm trying to go for realism because it is a simulator. But if you find it's too hard, untick that and it will be relatively easy. And what this means is you basically have to be extremely um, accurate in your lining up of the coupling of the trailer. If you're out by a few inches or whatever, it may not couple up and it could get annoying if you're not an extremely good reverser. So untick that if that's the case. If you're not worried about that, if you feel as though you want to learn how to do that properly and, and be more accurate, have it ticked. Um, trailer cables, pl player trailers, um, I think that was just default, so I've left it at that. Truck speed limiter, I have that unticked. Uh, the only time that the speed limiter would come in is if I'm on, um, uh, what is it, World of Trucks, because uh, your, your speed is limited to 65 miles per hour. But I have that unticked for when I'm playing single player. Uh, rain sensor, I have that tick. That's for uh, trucks that have automatic wipers that come on when the rain starts. So I have that tick. Automatic retarder, I have that tick. Um, engine brake, automatic, I have that unticked. Automatic engine electric start, I have that unticked. And automatic parking brake engage, I have that unticked. The reason I have that automatic engine and electricity start unticked is because I use a button box that has an ignition. On it, and if I had that ticked, it wouldn't work correctly in that position. Um, where are we? Automatic drop of liftable axles, I have that ticked. Um, air brakes simulation, have that ticked. That's your Jake brake, as far as I know. Uh, realistic fuel consumption, again, for realism, I have that ticked. Anti lock brake system, I don't know why that's ticked. That should be unticked, and so should traction control, because I normally have them unticked. So there you go. Luckily, I did check because normally they're unticked for more realism. All right, so I have them unticked. But again, your choice if you want to go with handy lock braking system and traction control, that's up to you. Uh, cruise control grid steps. I have that at five kilometres or five miles per hour. Being The reason being is because then it's um, when I'm on, in cruise control, each time I increase it, it increases it by five miles per hour. So for example, if I'm in an area that it's 45, mi uh, 45 miles per hour speed limit, I'm at 40. If I turned on the cruise control and I had it set at one kilometre an hour, I'd have to be keep pressing that button five times to get it to jump up to 45. By having it set here, I only have to press it once and it jumps from 40, 45, and it's just a lot quicker. Smart cruise control tolerance, I have it zero, meaning that if it's 45 miles per hour, it will sit on 45 miles per hour and not allow it to drop or, or go above that. That way you, you sit at the speed limit and you've got no problems. Adaptive cruise control, I found that 20 metres, I had, have it at 30 metres in ETS, but I have found that 20 metres is better in ATS. Again, just my personal preference. Emergency brake, emergency brake system, I have that disabled because... This basically shuts the or shuts your truck down by hitting the brakes and locking up if something's in your way. And the thing is, sometimes it detects something that isn't there or is actually moving with you. Anyway, it's disabled because it's more of a nightmare than it is a help. Automatic headlights and automatic high beam. I have them ticked. They are brilliant for the night time. If you're driving, this automatically... Um, Disables uh, high beam if there's a car coming towards you once the car's passed or truck, um, it then turns the high beam back on so you're not constantly fiddling with your light switches. Automatic blinker turn off that's self explanatory. I have that turned on for realism because a normal truck automatically turns its blinkers off. Cabin accessories physics I have that tick because that makes, makes anything that's hanging down that's dangling, it makes it sway and move just like a normal. Thing that's hanging down in a truck cabin would 
um, due to the inertia of the cabin. So again, for realism person purposes, I have that tick. But if you're finding that your frames per second are slowing down, you can untick that because it can interfere with that at times when you're in cabin. So if your frames per second in cabin are very uh, a lot slower than outside the cabin, untick this setting and you may find that it will increase. Not guaranteed, but it may do. Okay, steering camera rotation. Even though I use uh, head tracking, I have that ticked. I used to have it unticked because I thought it would interfere with the head tracking, but I've since done a lot of testing and it doesn't interfere in any way. But when I'm not using head tracking, that takes over and I still get sort of like head tracking. I uh, have that set at 100%. Uh, steering camera rotation on reverse, have that disabled because I don't want that while I'm reversing. So I stick my head out the window and look back. Um, blinker camera rotation, have that unticked. Uh, physical camera movement, have that ticked because I want physical camera to be able to move. 104% uh, and 100% depending on your preferences. That's what I find is best for me. Regional settings, okay, English, United States. Uh, region USA, because we're in the USA. Uh, Local city and country names, yes. Show secondary names in map, have that unticked. I've never ticked it, so I don't know if that improves anything or, or, or makes it worse. One day I'll test it, <laughs> but not today. Display currency, US dollars again, because we're in the US. 24 hour clock, no thank you. Uh, length in units, miles, weight units, pounds. You get the idea. It's all US. Uh, default chat settings these are all the default settings because i don't normally get into chats because i don't run convoys which i do want to run convoys but as i live in australia it's very hard to find people to convoy with uh, because of the times that i'm available or whatever but if uh, you're up for a convoy and you're prepared to do it either late at night or early in the morning if you're in another part of the world then uh, give me a shout out down there in the description, uh, in the comments. Uh, quick replies, I've never configured them. Uh, not something I'm concerned about. All right, keys and buttons. I'm not going to go through this because this is all personal comp or, or system related because I have um, so many different controllers that I use. For example, I have a button box, I have the steering wheel, I have the uh, gearbox, I have the gear knob, um, and I have pedals, and I have the buttons on the steering wheel. Then, on top of that, I also have two tablets that run Sim Dash or Sim Dashboard um, using Android, and they're also um, assigned to different buttons and whatnot. So, if I was to show you all my buttons, it, it wouldn't be relative to you. But if you want, you can have a look at them but I don't suggest that you use them because you should map your own buttons to meet your own requirements. I'll go through this slowly. So if you want to pause it at any time, you can. And check out the buttons that I use. Again, they will be basically irrelevant to your system. So we'll move on. Okay, controls. And again, as you can see, I have the... Driving force racing wheel. I have this one here, which is the uh, gear knob or the 18 speed gear knob with splitter and, sh and high low range and um, jake brake on the gear knob itself. It's a, a true 18 speed gear knob from a truck that converted to the PC. Then I have my button box here uh, as well. So in the controller subtype, I go for wheel, naturally, because it is a steering wheel. Transmission, H-shifter, because I'm using the H-shifter from Logitech. Adaptive automatic transmission, disabled because I don't use auto. Steering sensitivity, uh, this is the ones, again, that I've found offer the most realistic settings for me. All right? May not be for you, but it's a good place to start, and then you can, as we say here in Australia, suck it and see. Um, so... You can set it at this, see how it feels, and then just accordingly uh, to the way you like it. But I, again, through the trucks that I've driven in real life, I found that these settings are the closest uh, for me. 
right? So 1.10 for steering sensitivity, linearity 0.12, uh, overall gain 140, centering at high speed 100%, centering at low speed 50, uh, internal friction 50, engine resonance, turn that off, not interested. That basically is the shaking of your steering wheel from the vibrations of your engine. Brain surface 12%. I, I had that turned down relatively low because, I, again, like I explained, I um, have my system set up in the living room and um, the steering wheel can get quite noisy if it's going across dirty, dirty dirt roads or uneven surfaces because it's a G29 and it rattles like crazy when it does that. So I've got this turned down relatively low so that uh, the noise from the steering wheel doesn't interfere with other people in the room or if I'm doing something late at night, if they're asleep, it doesn't wake them up. Okay, bumps save at 45%, collisions 25%, gearbox grinder have at 10. I'm going to crank that up a bit, say 40, because I've found that it's not enough. Uh, understeer slip 50%, um, and these are greyed out, obviously, because of one of the other settings. Uh, no, this is for um, the wheels that have um, that other force feedback thing. I can't remember what it's called. Okay, steering axis, of course, is from the steering wheel. As you can see, me turning it, it shows that yellow line. I have the dead zone at zero. I have it centered. Uh, then the, oh, I'm going to say something. Uh. <laughs> oh, sorry, people. That happened in my last video, too. Snuck up on me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, back to this joy accelerator. I have that set to 15% for the dead zone and inverted. Again, found that it's closest to realistic. Brake, I ha again have that at 15% uh, dead zone and inverted. Uh, the clutch, I have the dead zone at 15% and then I have it inverted and I also have the clutch range at 85% because I used to have it down here and was wondering why the truck was always stalling, especially modded trucks uh, or trucks with smaller capacity engines. It was always stalling if I had it down here. But by putting it up here at 85%, it feels like more like a realistic clutch. Um, and also I don't stall as much, so it's a bonus. Uh, look up and down axis, don't have any of that. And then shift to layout, I have it at Eaton Fuller 18 speed because I love the 18 speed. That doesn't mean you're restricted to the 18 speed. Um, for example, the truck I was just driving on um, American Truck Simulator before I started this video was a 12 speed and it doesn't change. But it just allows for the 18 speed if, you have, if you're using an 18 speed. Um, if you had it on 13 speed, I don't know if the 18 speed would work. So I put it on 18 speed so that it gives you the full range of gearboxes that you can use. The shifter layout behavior is advanced. You have a choice of simple warning sounds or simple. I go for advanced. Uh, I use clutch and throttle. And what clutch and throttle means is that it's very similar to the realistic setup where if you're gearing up through the gears by simply taking your foot off the accelerator and moving the gear up, and matching the uh, revs per minute, it will then go into gear without pressing the clutch in. So if you can imagine, you're in third gear, you want to go to fourth, you've got your throttle um, pressed halfway down all the way, whichever, take your foot off the throttle into fourth gear once the uh, revs match, depending on the gearbox and the motor at the time. But I found that's normally between... Um, 1100 and 1500 revs per minute in most trucks uh, it will then go into gear but i use the clutch and throttle so that when i'm going down through the gears i use the clutch to go down through the gears uh, so they'll mesh properly because you need to be able to do it a lot quicker when you're gearing down than when you're going up through the gears or at least i found that then you're shifting um positions these again will be dependent on what you're using uh, this is for the Logitech um, gear shifter and the um, the 18-speed gear knob that I use. So these gear, these ones here from 
first three to six, uh, my gear pattern on the um, Logitech gear shifter, and these two buttons here are on the gear knob that I use, right? The 18 speed, speed gear knob. If you've got any questions about this, uh, just let me know down in the comments, and I'm only too happy to help you out. Shifter toggles, you toggles use switch mode have that tick very important because uh this is you know the, for the for if you're using the gear knob 18 speed gear knob you want that tick automatic gearbox which i don't use but i've got this button this map to a couple of buttons on the uh joystick on the gear knob sorry um just in case i ever use an automatic which i never do but it's there in case uh controller resection reset blah, blah, blah. controller selection um it's for your mouse cursor and uh i just have to set it 500 times and it seems to work not a big deal color feedback i have that ticked don't know what it is for but that was the default setting so i've left it if you're using eye tracking or anything like that you will be able to tick this because it will detect the hardware that you have configured You'll tick that and then have to configure that. But because I use Open Track, which is a free um, tracking head tracking system, I've got a video for that, and I'll leave it. I'll, I'll leave the link down to my how-to videos in the description. So you, if you're interested in any of the stuff that I use, it'll be in there and explain to you how to use it. Um, but because I use Open Track, like I was saying, it's a free software. It doesn't. Um, need any hardware it doesn't need any software installed um it's like a standalone program so i don't need to have that ticked all right so yeah so that's uh the settings if there's anything that's confused you or anything that you want to ask questions about do so down in the comments below or on my discord channel there's a link to that uh in the uh, comments i think i've got oh, well there will be i'll put a link down there and if you want to have a look at any of the how-to videos, um, there'll be a link to that as well in the description. All right, now stick around because I've now got a little tip for you. Okay, so here's a quick tip for you. Uh, of a night time, a lot of people may not know about this, but for example, if we turn the lights off, okay, turn lights wait on let's get that off so here's your standard low beam headlights okay so now you want your high beam boom but as you can see or i don't know if you can but if you have a look at the roof of the truck i have some um spotlights on the top of the truck they're not turning on why is that so well what you can do is if you go to the uh adjustments vehicle adjustments and then go into adjust lights if you see here it's got front auxiliary roof auxiliary lights and a lot of people don't know that unless you click these your auxiliary lights at the on the roof or on the front of the truck will not switch on unless you have them on see how the lights came on all right so if you a lot of you have been driving around thinking hang on why do my lights not work on the roof or the auxiliary lights not work? It is because you haven't got these ticked. So of a night time before you go out, always check in the um, adjustment section under lights that this is ticked. And that way you will be ensured that your extra lights or auxiliary lights are working at all times. So like I say, just a quick tip and that's it so yeah if you liked uh, the video um, please subscribe um, and share the video with your friends and family and whatever because it helps me out with the uh, algorithm here on youtube and uh, yeah hopefully if you did like it we'll catch you in the next one bye for now